Orb weaver spiders are one of the most successful families of arachnids on the planet. These are also some of the most commonly encountered spiders, but how much do you really know about your eight-legged neighbors? My name is Ben Zeno, and my mission is to inspire you to learn about and conserve the amazing wildlife that's just waiting to be discovered all around us. Today, our mission is to find and learn about the most common orb weaving spiders, which can be found here in North Carolina. Investigating the unique identifying characteristics and ecological roles of each individual species. Okay, in this leaf right here is one of my favorite orb weaving spiders of all time. Let's see if we can coax her out. Yeah, this is a beautiful, oh, there she goes. This right here, is a truly amazing spider. This is the marbled orb weaver, sometimes called the pumpkin spider, because these spiders really do look a lot like pumpkins. The coloration on the abdomen here can vary from an orange to this really beautiful yellow, but always the cephalothorax and the legs are going to be a pumpkin orange coloration, and those legs will kind of end with white and black bands. Now I also think that marbled orb weavers are some of the harder orb weaving species to find because in my experience this species tends to prefer a little bit less disturbed habitat than some of our other orb weaving spiders like for instance the spotted orb weaver. Now ecologically the marbled orb weaver and the spotted orb weaver are not so different. They are very similar in size and both of these orb weavers are targeting kind of mid-sized flying insects but I would say that their habitat preferences do make them pretty ecologically distinctive. Oftentimes, these marbled orb weavers will also be primarily nocturnal, although a little bit less so than our spotted orb weavers. And as you saw, they'll usually construct a little silken retreat for themselves, typically in a dead leaf right above their web. And just like the other orb weaving spiders, this species does have a very mild neurotoxin that it will use to paralyze its prey items, but that neurotoxin is not medically significant to humans. So even if you were to sustain a bite from one of these beautiful spiders, it would probably feel something like a mosquito bite. But wow, this is just a beautiful spider. And I think that this individual in particular might be the most gorgeous marbled orb weaver I have ever had the opportunity to work with. So we'll get this beautiful female right back in her retreat and we'll keep searching for the other common orb weavers of North Carolina. But what a fantastic animal to work with. In this leaf retreat right here is what I would say, at least in disturbed areas, is the most common orb weaving spider encountered at this time of year. And I tickle her abdomen just a little. Oh, there she goes, yep. So their first defense against predators is gonna be to drop like she's doing. So this right here is the spotted orb weaver, Neoscona crucifera. Now that's an interesting epithet for this species because unlike the marbled orb weaver, there's not very bright coloration, nor does the abdomen have any really visible markings on it. And so that epithet is actually not a reference to their markings like in most species, but the way they will sit in their webs. So another common name for this species is the cross orb weaver, but I think that's confusing because there's also the St. Andrew's cross spider, which is not this spider. So I prefer to call this the spotted orb weaver. Now that common name comes from those twin spots that we can actually see on the ventral side of the abdomen. And I think that is the easiest way to identify this species. Now, like our other orb weavers, these can weave quite large webs. In fact, these will often be three to six meters in diameter if you count the stabilizing strands. And they are primarily nocturnal. So a lot of our flying insects do not fly during the day because there's a huge risk of bird predation. And that means most of their prey base, at least during the summer months, is going to be nocturnal. But they actually shift their activity pattern as the weather gets cooler and less and less insects fly at night until right around now, towards the heart of fall, is when you actually start to see the species more often sitting in their web during the daylight hours. Now, I remember as a kid being really scared of these spiders, but hopefully now that you know, all you have to look for, she just did a backflip, is those two ventral spots. You can really easily tell this species from something like a black widow, which actually does have a pretty similar body plan. Now, the bite of this species is also not something to be worried about. As you can see, even if let's say one were to fall on you, mosquito get off my nose, or if you were to walk through their web and the spider ended up on your body, you don't have to freak out and squish it. You can just return them to their web or the ground. That's all they really want to do. But their venom is mostly used to paralyze their prey. It is not designed 
to be anti-predatory. So if you were to receive a bite from one of these spiders, it would probably be something like a mosquito bite, of which I have received numerous during this filming session. We can just respect them for the amazing animals that they are and maybe give them a little thank you for eating all those mosquitoes. This little spider right here may not look like much, but I actually think that this right here might be the most unique orb weaving spider that we have here in North Carolina. Oh, and she's doing a defensive behavior. She's actually shaking her web at me. Well, this weird, whoa, oh no, it flipped over and it can't get back up. There it goes. This weird and wonderful arachnid right here is the spiny backed orb weaver. And this is actually one of the smallest species of orb weavers we have in North Carolina. This individual right here, believe it or not, this is actually a fully grown individual. This is actually as big as they will get and only the females get this large. Now, the first thing you'll probably notice about this species is its extremely distinctive appearance. Usually the base color of this abdomen is going to be a white or a yellow with a few dark spots. And looking at it right now, it kind of looks like a little face. It almost looks like a crab with those spines on its abdomen. In fact, that resemblance is so strong that another common name for this spider is the crab spider. And its specific epithet actually means crab-like. And I cannot pronounce the name of this genus, and it literally translates to belly thorn. And the distinctive feature of this spider are indeed those six thorn-like projections. Now these are actually chitinous spines that are primarily thought to believe anti-predatory. Whether or not those spines are used to camouflage, maybe make this spider look more like a seed pod, or if they're designed to make it more indigestible to predators whose mouths or throats are too small to accommodate those sharp spines is up for debate. So normally you can find spiny back orb weavers in these more wooded areas, whereas our other species, as you saw, prefer early successional vegetation like field edges or your yard or garden. Not to say that spiny backs can't be found in those places as well, but we're in a forest right now and this is the kind of condition that they typically prefer to live in. These are also consuming smaller winged insects than most of our other orb weavers. And so something like a mosquito is pretty much the optimal prey size for a spiny backed orb weaver. I think this makes them incredibly useful because I, for one, do not like getting bit by mosquitoes. I find them incredibly frustrating. And not only that, mosquitoes are the most deadly animals on earth, right? They transmit all kinds of nasty diseases to humans. So when we have more spiders like our spiny back orb weavers out here in the environment consuming those mosquitoes, there's a much lower risk of disease transmission to humans. What a unique and beautiful little spider. And I think this is just a great example of one of those organisms that you have to really get a close look at to truly appreciate their beauty and complexity. But that's one of the things I love so much about the invertebrate world. And we will get this beautiful girl right back in her web. What a cool little spider. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time. But until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Benzino of The Wild Report, signing out.